This is me, Pori Nog, just your average game collector. I have NES, Genesis, and Atari. Then there are TRS-80 games. I found them. And PAL PS2 Shovelware? They found me. You see, I host this dumb retro gaming show on YouTube, and I shoot it. Okay, so it's not that average. Between you and me, something amazing happened. Now I have all these stupid license games. It's really cool, but totally secret. And you know what? Life's never been the same. Hello and welcome to the world of Dippy Egg where we take a look at all of the silly games that exist in this world and today is no different because we have some licensed monstrosities coming at you so stay tuned. You know growing up I owned a Nintendo 64 primarily although I did have a, a PlayStation 1 as sort of the, the side chick of game consoles and I didn't have a lot of games for it growing up. I only had a couple, but the one that stuck out like a sore thumb for me was definitely this one. Wild Thornberry's Animal Adventures, which... I mean, I love the cartoon. I still do today. I just rewatched it somewhat recently and it still holds up. It hits different. But how does the PlayStation game hold up? Well, we're gonna see. Hello, my name is Eliza Thornberry. Ah! The game begins with an intro sequence that's not unlike the one from the show. And while it absolutely looks like nightmare fuel today, back then this was kind of impressive, honestly. To start off, you're inside the convi and you can access options and you know, all that stuff in here. And of course, play the levels. The levels are basically glorified mini games, which on one hand I kind of expected, but on the other hand, I feel a franchise like this would pay itself nicely to a good action adventure sort of game. But let's work with what we have. Before each level, you get the nightmare fueled 32 bit animated anomaly cutscenes, which are generally not much to say besides the fact that they're kind of funny to watch. What? I'm sorry. Those ravens over there, they're the noisiest of all. I'm pretty sure a lot of these are loosely based on episodes of the show, so it's fine for what it is. Oh man, here's the first minigame. I bet it's gonna be really intense. Oh, it's just a glorified version of Simon Says. What a way to start off this package. But the lore in this part is that they're on Vancouver Island and Eliza wants these ravens to go away to help this other animal sleep. And of course, the only way they'll do that is if she crosses a river and risks falling into the water and freezing to death. But this is the second minigame. It's Frogger. Literally, it's just a Frogger clone. I mean, don't get me wrong. Frogger's a fun time. And I even have a weird soft spot for that really stupid rebooted PS1 Frogger game. Maybe we'll look at that one day. But man, this is something else. It plays fine enough, I guess. But sometimes you get like a slightly wonky death here and there, you know. And the design isn't award winning or anything. Each area has two based mini games and a few segments to each of them. In Belize, you gotta traverse this sort of temple and avoid these creepy creatures which are later revealed to be monkey after tagging them all because nothing teaches lessons like a game of tag we got donnie playing a game of snake with monkeys and stuff the enemies are snakes it's like a donkey kong jr scenario where the star is now the bad guy i don't know what i'm saying shout out to donkey kong jr though i'm gonna be a champion of that one day you know if i'm playing these games maybe i can talk to animals as well Time to find out. Um, yes, excuse me. Um, what PlayStation 1 games did you grow up with? Must be a Nintendo 64 fanboy. 
but that's just what it comes down to every mini game in this package for the most part is either lackluster such as these tree climbing segments bad or inspired by a pre-existing arcade game of some sort like i could go on about this awful stage where darwin has to avoid enemy spam of capybaras but that's all there is really to say my favorite part is iceland because first you got the precision platforming with debbie which is fine enough but then you get good old eliza who finds active geysers that are about to erupt and she does the responsible thing instead of avoiding them she decides to play nine holes of golf it's actually a lot better than i thought it'd be but the physics still are kind of dopey A lot of these stages are just kind of puzzly, sort of top-down stages. You got the Pac-Man ripoff stage where you collect charcoal, much to the dismay of Hank Hill. <laughs> Honestly, this game is, in general, pretty harmless. At least until we get to Tasmania, the last stage. Though, you can play any stage in order. It has this abomination of a level in it. You play as Darwin and you gotta climb this wall with these asinine controls where each arm is controlled by either the control pad or the face buttons yeah there's four buttons for each arm to control this thing it's it's a huge disaster of a level you got these annoying bats knocking you down as well as slippery rocks that you can hang on to for too long it was rough to get through but at least you get to finish off with the another pac-man inspired stage i think a big thing with these maze sort of deals is that the camera angle is really weird like i've never seen a pac-man clone where my critique is that it's a bad camera angle like imagine goofing that up that's some award-winning goof ups right there but this final stage has you sweeping footprints yeah you better clean up tasmania damn it but the game ends with you find the rare tasmanian tigers and that's that i beat wild thornberry's animal adventures after 20 years and i'm ready for the ultimate ending Oh man, all my work has led to this. Here it is. Oh my god, what an ending. <laughs> but don't you worry, Animal Adventures is not the only Wild Thornberries game. Next up we have Wild Thornberries Rambler for the Game Boy Color, a console that absolutely does not have any shovelware on it. <laughs> music is so Game Boy Color. But interestingly enough, this game has a two-player option. I wonder if anybody has ever actually plugged up the link cable with their Game Boy Colors and played two-player Wild Thornberry's Rambler. So, um, would you like to play some two-player Wild Thornberry's Rambler with me? See, I told you so. The plot is pretty much that Nigel and Marianne want to win a film award and so that's the goal of this all. Man, I love Donnie as a character, but his dialogue doesn't work in text form. He says, and I quote, Yip yip, aro, meep, oh be quiet, slurp, your poetry. The game is also a mini game collection of sorts and each character has their own designated level and you can play them in any order you please, much like Animal Adventures. Eliza's game is the first one I did and it's just a platform where you free animals that were locked up in cages by Kip and Biederman, the antagonists that are on several episodes of the TV show. It's easy enough, but there's not much to say. And if you lose, Kip and Biederman catch you and they kill Eliza. Oh, oh, never mind. They just take her to her dad. Darwin's stage is pretty similar, only this time he's collecting film for the nature show. The controls are pretty iffy, honestly, and it's kind of hard to avoid enemies with how the screen moves, but at least it's playable. At least when Darwin climbs, you aren't using eight buttons to do so. Not that the Game Boy has eight buttons, but you know. Donnie's stage is just a top-down stage where he eats bugs. Yeah, that's it. 
next game. For Debbie's game, she drives the combi because her CDs got lost or something. I hope they're Gornoy's CDs, but given her style and her aesthetic, I'm sure they're like Pearl Jam CDs or some shit. Just top-down driving, but it's functional, and that's all you can really ask for with a licensed Game Boy Color game. Nigel Sage just has him coming down a mountain on a cable, collecting VHS tapes as he, as he comes down. I know how that be. I hope one of these VHS tapes is Wild Wild West. Finally, you got the Marianne stage, which is definitely the hardest of them all, and presumably the canonical last stage. You basically climb a mountain and traverse caves to get footage of animals, and the geography of it just makes zero sense. Like, you'll go through a doorway in the cave where you'll visibly see the top of the mountain and you'll just wind up further down the mountain. It's fine, but sometimes climbing on the wall can be really iffy and you'll just randomly fall off for no reason. And if you do need to start this stage all over again, you start at the very beginning and it's giving me vibes like that Darwin level in Animal Adventures, but it's not nearly that bad. Finally, you get out of this messy maze and you make it to the top and you get to capture rare footage of a yeti. Surprisingly, the yeti is just vibing and it doesn't hurt any of the thornberries. After you beat the game, they rush back to the United States where they attend an award show where Kip and Biederman end up winning the award for a film about poaching, ironically enough. Eliza is outraged at this. Why does the one antagonist look like he, if he lifted up his shirt, Krang would be there? I don't know. But the Thornburgers get second place and it's all over. Jesus Christ, that ending was incredible. A true work of art. But don't you worry, because we have even more. We have Wild Thornberry Games on the Game Boy Advance. Let's go. Let's get this bread. Next up is Wild Thornberry's Chimp Chase on the Game Boy Advance. This one starts you out in South America and you're playing as Darwin traversing the trees and collecting cheese puffs and I'm genuinely not the kind of guy to really care about graphics. I genuinely don't care but I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't at least point out how ugly this game looks. I mean the trees look like somebody puked on the screen and the animations look like they were created by the people who made Dinosaur Adventure. The controls are kind of clunky, playable, but clunky, and Darwin can climb the air. Ooh. After the first level, Darwin gets kidnapped, and hence the chimp chase. The whole plot of this game is rescuing Darwin, and the Eliza stage after is pretty much the same idea. Going through the puke forest and climbing trees and stuff, but sadly, I, while I did manage to play through the last two games, this one was a deal breaker. I mean, you get three lives, zero continues, you can't save the game and I mean I still can't fathom the concept of GBA games not having a save function but it's been happening to me so much in these videos over the past few years that I kind of expect it from licensed titles at this point but I'm still gonna critique them every single time even then having continues just seems like a common courtesy especially for a licensed kids game I mean why make it artificially more difficult the passwords are like eight random characters too and that's gonna get tedious real fast i admittedly didn't play this one that much just because the lack of continues was a big issue combined with the fact that the game controls like a rock out of curiosity i did hunt down a code for the final stage and it's just a boss fight with the bad guys and they need to hit their wood chipper sort of machine with a boomerang to activate it while the bad guys are near so they get sucked in to it I, I couldn't really do it I, I got a I got to the second phase and I just kind of tapped out but I am admittedly just impatient with the game as a whole plus it's pretty easy for Eliza to get sucked into the wood chipper and get chopped up and killed rip so wild thornberries chimp chase uh that was bad but I have an exclusive tip on how to keep Darwin safe See, in the first level, Darwin gets kidnapped after you beat it. So if you never play this game, Darwin never gets kidnapped. And thusly, you save Darwin by not playing this game. 
tune in the dippy egg for more exclusive video game hints and tips and tricks but don't you worry chimp chase is not the only wild thornberries game on the game boy advance in fact there's 2.5 games based on the wild thornberries on the game boy advance and right now we're going to take a look at the 0.5 we got rugrats go wild based on that movie now yes this is perhaps arguably more so a rugrats movie and game but there's so many rugrats games already so we'll let wild thornberries have this it might not be a good thing so we'll see the movie was pretty underwhelming and i still have it on vhs complete with this scratch and sniff card that you used when the icon came up on the screen so you could smell the movie complete with the aroma of a foot now suddenly i want to set this movie in the game based on it on fire but i digress we've got rugrats go wild on the gba the game begins by telling the story of the movie if you saw the movie and didn't fall asleep during it you know what to expect and as i expected it is indeed more of a rugrats title as you play as tommy exploring the island and you find chucky who's with donnie and he tells you that you need more gushy balls sir once you find 20 of the gushy balls you can play your first mini game-esque level which is just tommy in the trees throwing these gushy balls at the monkeys seems a bit dangerous for a baby but whatever it's pretty bland and your throw is one of those annoying arch throws the ideal pet peeve of gaming as you meet more characters they request items in order to play their mini game stages with spice you basically got the same exact stage only instead of monkeys you're throwing the gushy balls at bugs and these alligators god it just keeps getting more dangerous huh after that you collect items for phil and lil and you play this racing stage where you gotta catch a kitty and holy crap you drive this stroller around and man the controls for it are so bad like so bad that i'm legitimately struggling to think of worse driving controls while i'm writing this script being top down you'd expect it to just be left and right turn you into that respective direction most self-respecting top-down racers are like that and even the combi level from the wild thornberries rambler game implicate that control fine but in this one you like turn by pointing in the direction you want to go while pressing gas but even then i don't feel like i have the hang of these controls at all i have no clue i can't even beat this and i realistically probably could have beaten this game very easily if not for this but this is legitimately unplayable maybe i should have burned this game after all Okay, so what did you think of the final season of Wild Thornberries? I thought it was kind of weird how they went for the whole Eliza falls in love with a pop singer angle. I don't know. Maybe there's a reason why I never saw it aired on TV back in the day. What do you think? They don't like it either. Speaking of movie games, we also have Wild Thornberries, the movie. The game. Please be better than Go Wild. Please, please, please. So this is based on the Wild Thornberries movie, obviously, and honestly, that movie was pretty good. I mean, I wouldn't rank it as high as some other Nickelodeon films. I mean, Snow Day still hits different. I don't care what any of you say, but I thought it was a perfectly serviceable movie. The game? Well, it's a video game, all right. Once again, it's pretty much just glorified mini games, but at least it's more of a linear layout than the other games, and it sort of follows the plot of the movie. You start off by playing Keep Away with these poachers by picking up these cheetahs cubs and keeping them from getting abducted <laughs> what a tedious way to start off this game then you got this stage where eliza is hanging onto the helicopter and it's your duty to chase after it with the combi this stage is kind of a mess and it's sort of trial and error to memorize the stage because you got to be directly underneath the helicopter for a few seconds and sometimes this happens <laughs> Maybe it's just my distaste of that Rugrats Go Wild stage, but at least this dumpster fire is still a breath of fresh air compared to that. And after that, yeah, I play as Darwin protecting the cheetah cubs from these poachers who try to climb up the cliff to get them. All while making sure that the cubs don't run away. When a poacher climbs up, Darwin has to throw his feces at them to make sure that they don't get up there. Yeah, it says it's a pineapple. That doesn't look like no pineapple. After that is the Eliza escape from the school stages. Basic maze sort of levels, nothing significant. Moving on. 
The security guards are kind of really dumb here, though, and they just kind of walk into bushes and stuff. It's kind of funny. Then you got Eliza on a train trying to save the elephants, and she steals people's luggage and throws them at the vehicle to stop it. It's tedious, but it's easy. Hey, my Game Boy Color with Wild Numbers Rambler was in there. Then there's a driving stage where you're Debbie and you're on a motorcycle. Man, I'm sucking copious amounts of ass at this level, but I still first tried it. Pro gamer. <laughs> Lost in the Jungle is just another top-down maze sort of deal. And then you got this really tedious minigame where you have to rescue the cheetah cubs from drowning. And then we get a little more spicy. You have to collect every piece of this medallion thing and get to the electric fence before the elephants do. But it's just another top-down maze sort of stage. And you do have this butterfly that's supposed to direct you to places, but a lot of times it's just useless. And then they try to take a page out of the book of animals adventures on the ps1 you play a frogger style game with the elephants which is fine enough and at last the final boss fight is here and quite possibly the most incredible thing i've ever played you play as eliza riding on the elephant which you had to get to in the frogger-esque stage and you beat the shit out of a helicopter with the elephant it's truly an incredible feat <laughs> All that for a generic congratulations screen. Amazing. But then this title also had actual mini games. There's six total and three are available from the start. I actually initially thought that this game was just those stupid mini games and I was worried that this game was like that, but thankfully it wasn't. This game is literally just color the picture. You win if you color it right, but what fun is that? I call this masterpiece Donnie Bloodbath. It's gonna be in a museum one day. I hope that you enjoy it when you want in and see it. Then you got Eliza swimming with who I assume is Echo the Dolphin and collecting stars. Yeah, harmless enough. The next one is sort of a racing stage, but it's literally controlled by a card based system. I guess this was the era we had Kingdom Hearts, Chain of Memories, and Metal Gear Acid. People really thought that card combat was the future, but you just used the cards to like fix the combi and give it gas, all while strategically using ones to make you drive forward. It's kind of bad, but it's ambitious at least. But surely the three mini games that you have to unlock by playing the game are better right well first off you got a jigsaw puzzle and well maybe the next two are better a sliding puzzle okay maybe not the final one is just a donnie escort mission and you guide the elephants to the end and that's the game okay so these games they were games all right kind of i don't know if i'd call uh chimp chase a game but regardless at least I have a soft spot for this one, so, you know, it is what it is. Bye.